All right, today we're going to work on an ornament. We've got an ornament set up. What? What? What'd you say? No, no ornaments today? <coughs> yeah, maybe a little. <laughs> well, he's not going to be helping me out. Anyway, so we're going to do these kind of ornaments today. So hang tight. Let's find out what happens. No, you can't chew on these ornaments. No, you cannot. <laughs> I think he's objecting a little bit. Anyway, so let me talk to you about what I have done here. I got uh, ordered a bunch of these little guys to do some testing and try some different thoughts as far as how to decorate these. So these are uh, decorated from the inside out. So all the good stuff is poured on the inside. And so that leaves the outside just glass. So it's going to give you a nice shiny, you know, surface anyway. So you don't have to worry about it. Well, the metallics come from these guys. So this is a Mountain or MTN, which is basically it's a spray paint without the spray. So this is just pure um, paint only. And you just dip stuff into it. I've got some uh, little pipettes that I've been using and I make sure that I put these guys off to the side when I'm done using it. In other words, I don't leave them in the can because the plastic, you know how spray paint, they say not to pour it into plastic. Well, there's a reason it'll start to eat through the plastic. So that's why I put these guys, I have a little uh, plate here handy and I will sque squeegee out whatever I'm interested in, put it on in my, uh, ornament and then pour the rest of it back into the can now obviously the appropriate color with appropriate can here but um and then just store them over here until i'm ready to go so that way i can keep on using these guys uh the other colors we're going to be using because you see there's uh greens in this one a couple different colors of green and blues and violets and stuff so those are how uh okay tongue is not working sorry again uh, those colors come from primary elements. So we're going to add these as well. And we're just going to do them in powder forms, but we're going to um, apply a polyacrylic on the inside for the powders to bond with the, the polyacrylic. And basically it creates a paint inside of your ornament. So, yeah, we're ready to get started. So let me put uh, the camera on the stand and let's get busy. Okay, so this is one of Judy Sand's ornaments. You can see they're a fairly large size and large meaning you can see it, it in my hand as far as comparison. I got these guys to do testers on. These are what they're actually gonna be applied to. And I'm hoping to do some sets for presents for this year. But I really like them because they're really super thick as far as glass ornaments go. And it could be something that you can hand down generations, you know, it's an heirloom piece. So that's the thought. The other thing is this little wire in here, you know how you've gotten ornaments in the past that the wire is seems really kind of wimpy, like it, it wants to pull out. This sucker is, it's a pretty thick wire. So the spring in it is really strong because of that. So. I'm not worried about this thing coming out at all. In fact, it's a little tricky getting it back in. So, I'm just letting you know about that. So, I'll put the link down below for the uh, for these guys as well as my little testers as well. Whoops, sorry about that. I bumped the camera there. I've got this at a weird angle so that way hopefully my hands don't hide what I'm doing. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some of this silver paint since I've got a gold and a copper already, I thought I'd try the silver. And just like spray paint, this has a ball in it. So shake it really, really good to get that ball nice and um, move it around in the can just before you use it. I'm going to get my pipette ready to get started. Let me see if my camera angle is okay before I get going. Okay. So the plan is to apply uh, a pipette full in the bottom and then we'll put our finger over the top so that it doesn't pour out. And I recommend gloves with this particular process because there's gonna be a lot of holding 
the your finger over the end to keep it from pouring out so we can manipulate it. So I'm gonna pour some in there and then bring it over a couple of times. So I'll get a couple, a few streaks going up, but I'm gonna try and get a majority of the uh, metallic to be at the top and just have a few lines going in the bottom. And obviously there'll be a little collection point here, but something interesting happens when you add the next element and I'll, I'll share with you when that gets closer. So, and I get a cup just to make it life a little easier. So let me see if I can get this. Turn this a little bit, if I can. Nope, it's, there we go. All right. Okay, now I just pinch up what I think I might need and then then some and then applying it to the bottom here let's see it might get a little more and since there is nothing else in this ornament right now if there's any excess I could just pour it straight back into the can so let me get this and then have a couple paper towels handy because you don't know when you're going to need them. I'm just cleaning off the outside edge of that that opening there. Okay. So you see, just as I'm moving it around, I'm getting a little silver there at the bottom. So I'm going to move it to the top a couple of times, rotate it, go to the top, rotate it, go to the top. And then I'm gonna move this around. I'm sorry if I'm not in camera here. I'm like all thumbs. Whoops. I'm gonna pour some of it out. Okay. So I'm get over the nozzle. There we go. All right. <laughs> Don't do this over your dining room table. If you do, make sure you put some plastic down because this silver could make a mess. Uh, Just like I did now. Okay, so I'm just letting this drain back in and I'm gonna pause this for a second, I'll be right back. All right, quite a bit got on my gloves and I didn't wanna transfer it to the outside. Now, if you notice, I've got skinny little lines starting to come down and I'm totally okay with that. Carefully lift this back up, see if we got Now what I want to check for is just to make sure I don't have any on the outside. And I'm going to put this facing down for just a moment. Put the lid on this guy and put it to the side. A little pro tip. This is something I do with the majority of my paints, especially since the cans look kind of similar but if I'm storing them in a way where all I'm seeing is the top I usually will put a little bit of color on the top it's kind of like what I do with even my alcohol links where they got a black top I make sure that I put the color on the top so that way when you're viewing it from above you can quickly grab the colors you're interested in and sometimes seeing a huge area of color will help you decide what colors you're actually interested in because you can see the word gold and copper, but just maybe not register the color visually if you're having a hard time visualizing. Uh, and this, this helps with visualizing, especially when you can put colors together side by side. Okay. All right, I think we are done with draining here. I'm showing a little bit more. Okay. So at this point, I'm not too worried about this. I'm gonna add a little bit of polyacrylic to this. And I'm gonna move this guy around. And what's gonna happen is, is some of the silver will end up breaking up a little bit. But the uh, polyacrylic's gonna get it. It still looks like it wants to drip out some more. 
You know what? I'm going to go ahead and pause, let this drain out just, just for a couple minutes and then come right back to it and we'll do the polyacrylic. Okay, I think this is dried enough and I've got some polyacrylic that I put in one of these little bottles here. It's kind of like a little mustard bottle. And I'm going to, that way I can put it in the nozzle rather easily. Let's see. On camera, yes. Let's see if I've got enough in there. So what I'm going to do here is basically run this around and coat it. You see how it's breaking up the silver a little bit? It gives it kind of an antique -y silver look. I need to add more. So what I'm trying to do is get definitely all the clear areas because I want to add some color in here. All right. So what I'm going to do here is just literally put this upside down, drain out the polyacrylic. There it goes. I left a little bit of silver. It actually didn't add a whole lot. <laughs> it didn't. Okay, I took most of the silver out, all right? Well, there's plan B. And, let's see, where is plan B? That's not it. Hang on, let me get it. Okay, so maybe my surface is super smooth or something like that, but most of my silver has gone away. So we got a plan B, and sometimes in art, that's what we, that's all you need to do is figure out what your plan B is, and sometimes all the way to Z's. Um, but I've drained out my uh, polyacrylic into the cup, so that way I don't have but a thin coat in here. So these little guys here, now shh, don't tell Starbucks, but I ran in and I snagged some. However, I was a good girl, and I bought several packages of, um, coffee for my hubby because you know you can't run out of coffee because that could be a problem so this is mayron silver powder and you have to be careful of this this stuff can take over um but it's a super super fine metallic powder here so i don't know if you can see that i use it a lot with resin art but these sticks are perfect for getting in this little tiny hole I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit in here. Okay, maybe a little less than that. Let's see. Ah, that works a little better. All right. Put that down. And then we're just going to kind of tap it on the palm of your hand. And here, yeah, see if I can get it come down a little bit too. Okay, so that adds a nice little silver as well. I'm going to try and put a little bit more in deposit real close to the, the top so that way I have a little bit in the bottom and a little bit at the top. So do this and we're going to drop it down real close I'm just barely tapping it on the, my hand right now because I want it to kind of move around a little bit so it's getting a little bit more on the top now by doing this it's getting rid of all the loose particles and redistributing around if there's anything loose. Okay. 
So we got the silver. It's got a nice little metallic -y sheen. Now, what I want to do is add two colors here that are kind of close. Hmm, I wonder if these are close enough. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I wanted to do a toned effect, not necessarily a bunch of different colors. So we'll do that one. I'm going to swap out the pink for now. So this color here, this is by Primary Elements. It's also a, uh, like a pigment powder, but this is made so that you can uh, blend it with like an acrylic type base and it creates an acrylic paint. And this color here is called Hot Cinnamon. But I've got some of these guys I ordered, oh gosh, a long time ago. And this is gonna be a great way to use up a lot of my extra colors that I haven't used in a while or haven't had any projects. All right, so I've got this here and I'm just gonna scoop up a little bit, put it in my thing and drop it down and just occasionally turn. And the cool thing about these sticks is they're also so long that you can get them pretty deep into uh, your ornament. And see how it's already starting to bond with the polyacrylic and it's creating paint. It's really kind of cool. There's that color, and now, let's see. I got my cup here, my trusty holder. I'm gonna add, here, let me close that one up. So I'm adding Harvest Soul next. Ooh, I like it when I open up a new, new color. It's always exciting. Like, I don't get excited about getting clothes, but I get excited about colors and paints and stuff like that. I don't know. I got issues. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing again where I'm just applying it in several different areas. And move it around occasionally. And I'm going to start hitting this with the palm of my hand soon. And redistributing all the color. So we'll get to see if we need to add some other colors or not. Let's see. And see, you are getting some those reds and golds and stuff. So let me start doing this a little bit. And you just do it with a, the fatty part of your hand. So this is one of those projects, you're gonna laugh at me, where you put a couple good movies on and just go to town. Get out your fun colors and just go for it. Now you can see where there's some clear bits in there and then the other bits are starting to color in. So I just need to add more color and I'm, I'm good. But I'm starting to get some overall coverage here, which is nice. Go back and forth between the two colors. I thought I might get the boys together and we do some um, ornaments together this year. Maybe I could talk them into it. I hope. 
I think grandma would get a kick out of meeting my mama. Um, receiving a couple ornaments like this. All right. So, all right. So I had the ornament facing downward a little bit so I can start filling in this area right at the at the top and starting to hit that on my hand. Just keep turning it around and it, it works on even distribution. Alright. So we're doing pretty good. Here's something that's interesting with the Mayron. Some of the colors are starting to go through the powder and start to colorize that a little bit too. So there's some interesting things happening and I bet the same thing's gonna happen in here too. It's acting like it's kind of staining the silver. So I think we ended up on something accidental that didn't quite happen with these. And so that's interesting. So maybe there's a step I missed. I don't know, but this is actually turning out really cool. I was happy. All right, so let's see. Add a little bit of each color, and I'm gonna try and put it right in the very beginning again, because I think we need just a little more. And see this area right in here is pretty clear still. So I'm gonna see if I can put it right on that spot. And while this sits, it's going to continue to meld together um, with the polyacrylic, and some of the colors will end up blending together. All right. So I think this here is the original silver that came out of the, uh, the mountain paint and added some really strong silver points. Hmm. Gives me an idea, but I don't know if I should do it or not. I'm kind of wondering about actually applying some of the silver in there straight and seeing what happens. I don't know. Hmm. Sometimes you can experiment on the fly. So... Oh wait, I'm gonna do it. Just because, why not? Here we go. Y'all might have to rewind to figure out what I actually did to create this guess. I might have to rewind it as well. Okay. So I'm gonna squirt a little bit of this in and then literally rotate this egg around and see if the silver will cover the areas that are left over. Oh, huge recommendation. When you're using that particular uh, paint, okay, put finger over hole, and I'm gonna just rotate and talk. Um, if you're using that paint, you might want to make sure you're in a very well ventilated area. If you're not, think about using a mask or respirator type of thing, because it is strong, just like you do just like a spray paint is. It is literally the spray paint um, solution. So what I was thinking of is if there was any holes in here that didn't have any paint on there uh, from the red and the, um, the amber color that um, the silver would go in there and pop through. So we'll see if that works. All right. Like I said, remember the silver is not on 
the outside. It is on the inside there. All right, I'm gonna tip this over and it's gonna drain out any extra silver if there is any. Okay. All right, so this is looking really, really interesting. Oh, I think I'm getting little bits of silver from my gloves. Crap. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of those for a second. Let me bring you in for a close-up. It's really complex. And a lot going on here. That's kind of cool. Now this here is a pigment powder that's on the outside. I'll clean that off. But it's still even down below. That is pretty cool. All right, so I think we are done with this for now. I just need to clean it up, put it to the side, let it finish drying, and maybe even go on the outside with maybe some silver line work. Now, if you do that, you might want to put a spray sealant to protect um, any outside um, paint applications you do or spray paint or anything like that but this like you see this metallic really pops out as far as a nice contrast so that's why you would take it some doing some brush strokes you know what I got an idea hmm hold on I need a tool okay so the tool I had to grab was a paintbrush I poured a little bit of the mountain silver into a cap here and I'm going to try and do some painting with it just to jazz this up a bit. Let's see, how can I do this without blocking what I'm showing? Sometimes my big old hands block off the view. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to simply... paint on some thoughts. I don't know. All right, so I am just kind of doodling here. And we're gonna work with some swirls and some designs. Just to see how things work. Repeat a couple of the designs. All right, now to try to figure out where to grab this thing so I'm not screwing up here. All right, here's that. Nope. Okay. All right. Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing here.
Sorry, I got hyper-focused. Drawing on a round surface is tricky sometimes. All right, let's see what I can do about this top part. It looks like a weird little ring and I don't really like it that much, but if I make it look like it's intended to do that, I'll be much happier. All right. Can you see that well? I'm, I'm moving it around so that I can see it, but I'm not looking in the camera. Oh, there's a blank spot. So if you have to grip and change your finger position, just very carefully move it around and then plant your fingers firmly down. So that way you're not going grab and then move over because that's when you get smears. And that way if you do touch wet paint, um, it's easier to fix it up with it being just a dot. If that makes any sense whatsoever. All right, a little bit of a spot there. Now this, this paint here, the um, mountain paint, because it's so metallic-y, you can simply just put dots on here and that would be enough. Like so. So now that I started that, I have to do it all over. <laughs> I'm just going to have to scatter them about a bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to let it dry because big dots will take a little bit to dry. So, a little bit of improv there. Nice little swirly design. That could be fun on a tree. I'll have to fix that area right there. It's bugging me so much, I'm going to have to fix it right now. Okay. Much happier. Okay. So, you guys do that a lot? Hey, put that in the description below, or in the comments below. Do you start on a project and then end, end up changing and tweaking it out midway through? This is definitely that case. So share with me and make sure I'm not the only one doing that. I hope not. Anyway, so hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell. Get notified next time I put something up. Later, y'all. Okay, this is the next day, and the colors have really blended together nicely in the background. So just focus on the background colors for a moment. So you see how they're blended a little bit more instead of patchier? The colors are uh, have turned a little bit on the transparent side, so that way one color can blend with another. Really pretty. And I really like the silver on top. That's very nice. So I'm going to hit this with a setting spray and probably um, uh, some kind of varnish spray to seal in this silver paint to keep it from uh, scratching off easy. So overall, I think this turned out nice. All right, y'all, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell. Get notified next time I put something up. Later.